Good morning, church. It is good to be together this morning. I thank those of you who have braved the weather and have come here this morning. And I say hello to the you who are watching by television as well and hoping you're staying warm. Uh, we're so glad that you're here this morning in this church that lives out the mission of sharing Christ's love in this community and then through this community to the world. And we want to always remind you that everybody, everybody is welcome to fully come and participate in the life of this congregation and in our worship services. So we invite you this morning into a time of worship. and join me in our songs of praise if you are able.
God, we come here this morning and we thirst for you. And we ask that as you quench our thirst, that your spirit lives in us, that we would share that, that water, that goodness with everyone. Bless us this morning and let us feel your presence so we may be your presence in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. begin with a moment of silent prayer.
Gracious and loving God, in the morning when we rise and in the evening when we lie down and in all the moments of our day in between, we believe you are with us and love us. We thank you, O God, for your eternal presence and your gracious care that follows us throughout all our lives. We especially thank you for your steadfast love, which always embraces us and walks with us. Grant us the strength of faith to hold on and to believe, even when the way seems unclear, and even when our circumstances seem confusing and overwhelming. Like Peter, James, and John, O oh Lord, help us to climb onto the mountain to experience you in all your majesty and glory. But then to come down from the mountain to live out our lives with faith and care and compassion, service and love. We pray today for those who are ill and grieving, for those who are frightened and discouraged, for those who are weary and tired. Touch each one with your healing power and bring an infusion of hope. Bless as well, O Lord, the caregivers, loved ones and friends who reach out to them with help, encouragement, and support. And be with us, O God, as we seek to be a community where all are welcomed and where all are valued, where all are celebrated for the talents offered and for the gifts volunteered. For we know, O God, that we are created to be in relationship with one another and that we need the diversity of the various parts in order to be a whole and functioning body of faith. May we be, and may we more and more become that sacred body of Christ here. And shine as a beacon of your love and hope and freedom to this whole community and beyond this community. O oh Lord, hear now the unspoken prayers that rise in silence from the depths of our hearts and to those needs that can find no voice other than yours, our concerns about health or finances or a relationship that needs healing. O oh Lord, we lift them all to you, O oh gracious Lord, through Christ. And now we pray as you have been taught to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is always a wonderful opportunity to be able to give our lives and our resources to God, and to honor, to honor God with our life. One of the things I want to put on your radar screen is to remind you that on, uh, how many of you have radar screens, by the way? <laughs> it's a term. <laughs> but uh, Ash Wednesday is the same day as uh, Valentine's Day. Kind of an interesting combination. But to remind you that 2 o'clock here in this multi-purpose room, in this chapel, in this sanctuary, we will celebrate uh, Ash Wednesday, and uh, I'm excited about it. Chris has uh, been working along with me to make a very unique Ash Wednesday service that we would like to have you come and to be a part of. 
How many of you are getting ready for the Super Bowl? Some people are getting ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, we're getting closer and closer all the time. There were two games yesterday. There'll be two games today, and then there'll be two games next week, and then we'll get down to waiting two weeks for one game. We want you to get ready for the Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R, soup or bowl. And what's gonna happen is when we get down to those last two teams, uh, we will begin to invite people to bring in cans of soup and there'll be two containers out in the lobby of this campus center and you'll be able to vote for your team with soup. And at the end of the day, no matter who wins the Super Bowl, those with food needs will win because we'll take those to local food pantries. <laughs> and uh, just want to remind you that uh, this is part of the many things that we do here, fun things that we do in order to give to God by showing God's love to others. So we invite the ushers to come forward now as we continue to do that. praise you because you are awesome and worthy of our praise. We praise you because you call us to life and you call us to share our life. We ask now that you bless what we've given to you. We ask that you'd use it so we can be a blessing to others. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
part of my pastoral ministry journey was a time when I spent as a children's minister. It was fun. And um, one of the things about children's ministry, if you have ever been where children's ministry is honored and is, uh, is very vital and vibrant, there seems to always be murals. You ever been in a church where in the children's section, they have murals painted, pictures of Bible stories and uh, just all kinds of things. And, and, and there's always that, that, that struggle that takes place when the trustees decide they're gonna paint over the murals. It gets ugly. I always wanna, uh, when I think about murals, I think about one place, if you ever wanna see children's murals, if you're ever in the city of Toledo, uh, you may want to stop at the Toledo Museum of Art, and then uh, after having a Tony Paco's hot dog in Toledo, you may want to go to Sylvania First United Methodist Church. First United Methodist Church in, in Sylvania. They have halls and halls of murals, and they're just so beautiful. And uh, when you think about it, when it comes to children's ministry and children's murals and children's pictures, you usually can count on the fact that somewhere on some wall is Jonah. Remember Jonah? Yeah, Jonah was pretty popular with kids. Now Jonah, God made him a call. Remember, in, in the murals, we'll talk about that in a minute, you can always count on what? A fish. There's going to be a fish on the wall. And Jonah, God made a call to him. God made a call to him to go to a place called Nineveh. Nineveh was a place at the time that was, was the enemy, the threat to the people who were Jonah's people. And Nineveh was far away, and God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and to preach to them a message of repentance, a message of, of hope, a message of turning around. We talked last week about call and, and about folks that, in the Bible that when they get that call, they just immediately just say yes. Jonah's response was, uh-uh, no way. I'm not going to Nineveh. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to get on a ship and I'm going to go to a place called Tarshish and I'm going to get as far away as I can. So, Jonah boarded this ship to run from God's call in his life. Did you ever run from God's call before? It gets a little messy. Jonah gets on this ship, and he's on the ship with, with these sailors, and the sailors are, are, are not really God's kind of, well, they're God's people, definitely, but they're, they're not really believers in God, but uh, they're God-fearing, because when Jonah gets on the ship, a mess starts to take place. The seas rise, a storm comes, and, and the ship is threatened. And the sailors come to this conclusion that there's something about this guy that we've put on the ship that is causing us difficulty. And we need to get him out of here. Well, Jonah agrees to jump off the ship. Jonah jumps off the ship and he ends up in the ocean. And uh, here's the part you always remember from Sunday school, big fish came and swallowed him up. And he stayed inside of that fish for three days. And uh, I always wondered about the Jonah story. When you stay inside something for three days in the belly of something for three days, I would think that he would have been digested. <laughs> but do you ever have something in your belly that doesn't digest? What happens? So the fish, the fish gets by, by the by the shore and he uh, uh, throws Jonah up. I think the liturgical term is barf. 
He, he, he got rid of them. We can say that in church, can't we? <laughs> the kids over here are laughing. They're, they're really into children's ministry at this moment. But, uh, but Jonah was thrown up onto to the beach. But there's something that happened to Jonah when he was inside this fish for three days. When you're inside a fish, you, uh, you have time to think, <laughs> time to pray, time to rethink of your life, time to think of what God perhaps has called you to be. So we pick up in Jonah chapter 3, and then we hear that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it a message I give you, is what God said. Jonah had some time to think. Jonah had time to review what all happened when he decided to run from God. So Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days in Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth, put on uh, burlap, put on, on, on something that, that called them to repentance. Jonah had experienced the preacher's nightmare. Here's what it is. He preached and they listened. I wonder what would ever happen. You know, I, I always think of the fellow, it wasn't preaching, but I heard this story about this pastor that he went into this hospital room and, and the wo woman was, was really sick and she said, you know, uh, pastor, lay your hands on me and heal me. And he put his hands on her. And she was completely healed. She became well again. And he got out in his car and he grabbed his steering wheel and said, don't ever let that happen again. <laughs> scary, scary when people start to listen. See, deep down, deep down, and you listen to some preaching sometimes and some people talking in God's holy churches, deep down. Jonah wanted to condemn these people. He didn't want God to spare them. It seems as though godly people spend a whole lot of time talking about who's in and who's out. Who's in and who's out. I'm sure Jonah had heard before that these Assyrians who eventually were a threat and came and captured his people and so on, he's been told probably since he was a kid that those Assyrians, those people in Nineveh, are people that are not worthy of God's love. We like to hang on. If I was to ask you, what is the most uh, popular verse in the world, uh, scripture verse, what would it be? John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We like to hang on to that. That's our, our signature verse for a lot of folks. What's John 3.17 say? All, all, that it says this, that God sent Jesus into the world not to condemn the world, but to save it through him. Now all of a sudden we got work. We got work. We have work of Sharing the good news that God's message in Jesus Christ is for everybody. God didn't come to condemn. He came to save. 
And when the people of Nineveh listened to what Jonas had to say, and they, return, they turned from their ways, they repented. They said even the animals repented. That's how effective this, this sermon was. Jonah was really ticked off. He was really angry. How could it that God would allow these people that Jonah didn't have high regard for to be loved on? Goes on to say, God goes on to say that he's abounding in steadfast love. In steadfast love. Jonah was ticked off. In fact, he was so ticked off that he pouted. Any of you ever pouted before? Oh, yeah, we got some powders. You know, it's an art we learned as a kid in Sunday school. But I don't know where we learned it, but we learned the art of pouting. Jonah gets under this tree, and it, 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 the tree grows up, and it shades him, and he likes the tree. And then a worm comes along and eats the tree. And, and, and Jonah is just, just so upset because God didn't save this tree. And God kind of says, you know, Jonah, you worry about the tree, but you don't worry about these people of Nineveh. The question is this this morning. What, what is this? Is the question is, what might you get out of this story? What might you get out of this story? How can we make a creative connection in the Jonah story? So the question is this. When you're free, fleeing from God, when you're fleeing, fleeing from God, who do you take along with you? Who do you take along with you? Here's what, here's what, I'm, what I'm saying. Is that uh, Jonah was fleeing from God. He was afraid. He, he was wrapped up in fear. He's wrapped up in fear to the point that when he got on that ship, these sailors that were innocent in a way, they got pulled into his fear. They, got, they were victims of his fear. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In fact, how many times does the Bible say don't be afraid? 365 times, which means every day of the year, you're called by God not to be afraid. This year, you get a free day. But 365 days a year, you are invited to not be afraid. Yet, yet, just listen. Look around you. See what's going on. Fear drives so much, so much of the hate that we have for other people. The world is hateful, and fear drives it. Fear drives it. So the question is, who do you bring along with you when you operate out of fear? when you operate out of fear. I think of a young woman right now who I, I really love. I really do, but, but she's been influenced by a lot of people that tell her who to be afraid of, who to be afraid of. And she's gripped, she's gripped. And once you start this fear thing, the next thing that happens is you start to say that person, those people, they're dangerous without even really ever becoming face to face with them. Second thing is this, where can you go to find the belly of the whale? Where can you go to find the belly of the whale? And here's, here's what I mean by that. Jonah got his act together, his spiritual act together, for at least a short period of time because he was in the whale, in this big fish, 
Because he was in the big fish, he had to, he had to spend time in prayer, in thought, in reflecting, in thinking through. You know, we talk a lot here about action. We, you know, we're, we're an action kind of church. You know, we share the love of Christ and his communion through the community of the world. I, that's such a valid mission and, and so happy that you actually live that out. But there's times, times when we need to withdraw. Jesus was very clear. If you look at his ministry, he, he was a guy of action, but also a guy who withdrew, a guy who went to a quiet place and spent time with God. The term for it is an action reflection model. We want you to, to do things to offer the love of Christ to this community and through the world to the world. But in the midst of that, there's times that you withdraw and you pray and you listen for God's still small voice. Finally, this. This is a tough one. Who is it that you're happy that they might not be included? Who is it that you're happy that they might not be included. Jonas's, Jonah's so-called faith drove him to ask God to not love these Ninevites, these people who were not like him. That's prevalent. That's prevalent in the world we live in today. Actually, people who call themselves godly, stating who, who, who should not be loved. But yet, yet, God loves all. Who is it that you do not include? I was gonna to sing to you this morning, but uh, this hymn is a beautiful hymn. It's a 19th century hymn. You've sung it before, but uh, I tried my office. It's not my wheelhouse, so I'm gonna read it to you. Remember this one? Listen to these words. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is a welcome for a sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. Listen to this now. But we make God's love too narrow by false limits of our own. And we magnify its strictness with a zeal God will not own. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we should rest upon God's word. And our lives would be illumined by the presence of the Lord.
homework this week for all of you is to take a moment to withdraw. Be alone. Get in the belly of the fish. Spend some time thinking and praying. And then your assignment is to choose one of these two tasks and uh, work on it. First one is, who do you drag with you when you are afraid? Who is it that you take down with you in your fears? Secondly, who is it, who is it that you ask God not to love? That you ask God not to love? Those are two tough assignments. The ones that are very, very necessary in the world we live in today. And all this go out in Jesus' name. Amen.
if you go back there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we'll come out here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to 40 degrees. It's going to feel like four. I know. I'm going to have to put shorts on. I'm not real nightfall. Yes, ma'am. I just was making room for that.
Saturday morning, I woke up and our and I hit the floor and I went, "Hey, it was, it was 49 degrees in our house. Our furnace had gone off, so uh, we've had the furnace. Uh, Sam, the maintenance guy, he's been out. He was at our house last night at 10 o'clock. We finally got it up to 68 degrees, so uh, uh, it's still not working great. But uh, so I didn't really sleep really too much last night. I kept getting up. The furnace would shut off. We'd have to flip it back on and. So uh, some some problem. But, uh, anyway, uh, we're we're thankful to be here today, aren't we? <laughs> okay, uh, today's lesson is on page 63, lesson number eight, and uh, uh, it's about death and eternity and 